Now, as you may have noticed, this is a special edition of Impact as part of our 100 Women season this month here on BBC World News. With me today is our guest editor for parts of the programme, the Pakistani author, Carmela Shamsi, who is also here with Christiane Baka to talk about Islam. Now, Christiane has a fascinating history. Let me tell you a little bit about her. As a presenter on MTV in the early 90s, she rocketed to fame, rubbing shoulders with the likes of Mick Jagger and Bono. After a chance meeting with the then famous cricketer, he's still pretty famous actually, Imran Khan, she travelled to Pakistan where she discovered Islam. She was drawn to the faith and began to read the Quran, finally converting to Islam in 1995. And she now runs a campaign that's designed to improve public understanding of the religion. Thank you for being with us. Thank you for having me. What are the misconceptions about Islam that you mostly experience? Oh, it's usually that Islam is backward, it encourages violence, and it is suppressive of women. Yet, more women than ever convert to Islam. Uh, about 5,000 British people convert to Islam every, every year, and the vast majority of them are Muslim women. Uh, you know, yeah, Muslim women. You've written a book from MTV to Mecca, as Bob Geldof said, it should have been called From Babe to Mecca, <laughs> which I thought was interesting. But can you tell us a little bit about that journey? Because it's obviously been a fascinating one. Oh, it's, yeah, it's been a very long journey, as you can imagine. Um, but you see, the, the essence of it really is that I found an inner uh, link, I suppose, with God. Um, Islam very much encourages the spiritual life. And that gets so neglected in our busy, you know, working environments in, in the West. And I can only encourage everybody to look at their soul and find their own spiritual path. Islam is very full on. You know, if you pray five times a day, you fast one month of the year for God, it really changes you from within. It softens you. It, um, you know, and so basically I do everything now in relation to God. And I used to have an inner void despite living the highlight, despite having this dream job. And that, I can say, is now filled with meaning and filled with God, and that's what it really is all about. Kabbalah, you mean you grew up in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. As a Muslim woman, what is it that about Christiane's experience that you find most interesting? Well, first of all, Eid Mubarak. Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak, Eid Mubarak I should have started by saying. <laughs> I, th I thought the question that, that I really want to ask first is whether when you were growing up, whether religion played a role in your life. So was it a matter of moving from one religion to another or mm -hmm. from no religion to some? Well, uh, religion didn't really play a role in my life. I was brought up as a, as a, as a Protestant, but uh, later on I found out that there was a lot of religion in some parts of my family members and I think I have inherited it. Right. It just jumped a generation. My parents were not very religious, but this longing, you know, this uh, interest in, mm. in the unseen mm. and uh, longing sort of to attach yourself somewhere mm. and, and, you know, this mystical mm. Um, I think I've inherited this and mm. it found itself in me right. via Islam and yeah. Sufism. And when you said that you were converting, did, given the misconceptions, particularly around women and Islam, yes. did the people around you worry about you? Oh, everybody worried and they still do probably. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, they also respect that I've found a path that gives me strength, hope, satisfaction and a direction and a purpose in life. You mm -hmm. know, everybody's looking for these kind of things. Mm -hmm. And going to Mecca in 2006, you've written about that quite eloquently. Thank Was you. that transformative absolutely for you? Well, yes. It's the big journey of a lifetime, the journey to God, where everyone is equal. You know, the slave prays next to the king, and they all ask for forgiveness. This is what two million Muslims did yesterday on the day of Arafat, the heart of the Hajj. They all ask for forgiveness, for blessings, etc., etc. And afterwards, you see the challenges for life, the challenges to keep the Hajj, not to fall back into your old mistakes. And, you know. Christian, thank you very much for being with us. <laughs> Eid Mubarak and to everyone out there who is celebrating Eid today. Also time to thank Carmela Shamsi who has been with us today as a guest editor, part of our 100 Women season. The series is going to close next week. It's been such a fantastic season, but we've got a special conference. Carmela, 99 other women, some of them high profile, some of them not as well known, will join us for a day of debate and interaction. So make sure you do join us here on BBC World News next Friday.